Hey, Chandler Bolt here, and joining me today is Rory Vaden. Uh, Rory's a good friend of mine. He's a New York Times bestselling author of Take the Stairs uh, and Procrastinate on Purpose. Uh, just an amazing, uh, amazing speaker, uh, and just appears frequently in the national media for insights on overcoming procrastination increasing focus, uh, creating more influential leadership. And really, um, he's super passionate about building personal brands. All right, if you're watching this on a YouTube channel, uh, you see that behind him, uh, Brand Builders Group, um, which is uh, his company. Just uh, Rory is one of those guys that he was the first, one of the first to take a chance on me uh, and bring me on his podcast. One of my first books um, with my brother, um, Seth from Need to Breathe. Um, you guys know um, the book we did here together. But um, so we're going to be talking today about, you know, how to become a new New York Times bestseller. I think there's some interesting tidbits there. Um, but especially like, how do you build a personal brand? I think there's two sides of the coin here. It's like, how do you build a personal brand from a book? And how do you use a personal brand to sell books? <laughs> uh, and so uh, kind of all things personal brand. Rory, welcome. Yeah, man. It's good to be here. What? What an honor to be in reverse, being interviewed by you. I remember you all those years ago and uh, so proud of what you guys are doing. Obviously, we're, we're fans of self-publishing school and, and uh, you know, promoting y'all to our community. So it's good to be here. Yeah. So I, I want to I go back and I know, I know you've mentioned before, you started self-publishing stuff at 22, then yeah. traditionally published at 29, then hit the New York Times bestseller, uh, bestseller list. So why books and especially, you know, why self-publishing at first, then why traditional publishing uh, and, and really that the big swing would take the stairs at 29 and hit New York Times bestseller list? Well, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, Brand Builders Group, we exist to help mission-driven messengers build and monetize their personal brand. And I don't know how you can have that conversation without including the book conversation in it. It is it is the number one accelerator of credibility in the world. I mean, it's just, uh, and you know, there's levels, there's levels of it, right? And I think that the reason why I self-published before I traditionally published was frankly, because I had to. <laughs> I mean, I, I, it, was, it was the option that was on the table. Um, and so, you know, we, we help people create their content, their body of IP, but we don't help them write books specifically. So we, books is one piece of a strategy. We do help people do book launches, but you know, what you guys have done with helping people take kind of the, the concept and the idea and the outline to a printed book in your hand is so powerful and important. Um, but you know, when, when some of our clients are really huge, like, you know, we work with massive, massive influencers. Um, you know, these are Times Magazine person of the year and top 50 podcasts in the world kind of people and people that worked with Barack Obama and the White House. And, um, but most of our, our clients are earlier on their journey. And so self-publishing is, it's the, it's the, it's what Damon John would call the affordable next step. It's like the thing you can do first. And, and, I struggled with this for years, was trying to figure out, should I self-publish or should I traditionally publish? And in one of our events, uh, you know, one of our, one of our topics is called bestseller launch plan. Um, and, and our whole curriculum is divided into uh, four phases and each phase is three parts. And in phase three, we talk about book launches specifically. And we say, look, if you can move 10,000 units on opening week and 50,000 units within two years, that's how you know you're ready for commercially publish. And if you're not, then self-publish. But to us, the question is never, should I do a book or not? Because the answer to that is yeah. always yes. I mean, yeah. for, our, for our clients, if you're building a personal brand, because we don't work with companies, we only work with personalities. And so, you know, whether you're a financial advisor or you're an information marketer or you're a direct sales person or, you know, you're a speaker or a coach or consultant, or you're a, a, an accountant or a lawyer, like we work with a lot of professional services. If you can, you should do a book because it, it immediately separates you from everyone else in your space. You know, now once you get into books, there's, you know, there's a whole nother like tier to go through there, but man, if you can do it, do it. So let's talk about like, I mean, you hit New York Times bestseller with that book. How, how'd you do it? And what did you see were like the main movers of copies uh, of books kind of through that marketing and launch process? Totally. So, you know, when you talk about a bestseller list, you know, there's, there's two conversations. There's, there's, 
you know, there's different levels of bestseller, right? Like you start with the Amazon sub, 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 sub category, and then all the way to New York Times. And it's, it's usually launch week, uh, you know, and specifically what we would call the launch season, which is the first six weeks. You know, New York Times especially is no longer just about week one. And the New York Times is kind of pretty open that they are not in favor of first time authors. Like they want to see a track record and they don't want to see just, you know, some flash in the pan. Hey, I figured out a way to, to, to manipulate 10,000 units in a week and then nothing after that for years and years. Um, so they want to see a real established track record. Um, so you have the launch, which is one conversation. But I think, you know, one of the things I love about what y'all teach, and we believe in it too, is what you really want is the real bestseller, the long tail perennial bestseller, right? You know, so we sold 12,000 units of Take the Stairs in opening week, and we hit number one on the Wall Street Journal, number two on the New York Times, you know, number one on USA Today and Amazon and all that. But, you know, selling hundreds of thousands, we're not at a million copies yet, but it's hundreds of thousands of copies since then is actually way more important and useful to the, to the business itself. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think the writing of the book, when it comes to the long tail, the writing of the book matters a lot. Um, and, you know, so it's, it depends on how you want to answer the question. But when it comes to the writing, I'll, I'll say this. Most authors struggle the most with telling people what their book is about in one sentence. If you can't explain the message of your book in one sentence, you have more thinking to do. You have more editing to do. You have more writing to do. The best books in the world have a, are ones where it's like they can be explained in one sentence, right? Start with why. Um, you know, Dave, Dave Ramsey would be, you know, pay cash. Um, you know, the secret is ask, believe, receive. The, the um, uh, you know, essentialism, less but better. Uh, originals by Adam Grant is take calculated risks. I mean, it's no accident that the hardest work is boiling your book down to one message. And, and really, with Brand Builder's strategy, we try to boil the entire brand down to a one sentence message. What do you want people to do when they are done listening to your two day training or reading your full book or listening to your keynote? What is the one thing that you want them to do? And most speakers can't tell you, most authors mm, can't tell you. Yeah. And that means they haven't done the hard, the hard writing part yet. I, I, I like that. And, and, and really it's, it, it then, the the book is an extension of the one sentence brand and so you have Bingo. the brand that clearly com communicates the message and you have the book that's like the trojan horse that's really but then it's con congruous or whatever the word is it's like there's full continuity between they read the book and then they say oh there's this next thing this there's this training or there's this workshop or there's this event and it has a consistent branding yeah. and messaging throughout the whole is that how you look at it Absolutely. And, and, and here's, the other, here's the other exercise that, that we put through people through, uh, which is so incredibly difficult, um, is, is can you answer what problem you solve in one word? And that is so freaking hard. And you have to do it for every book you write. You need to be able to answer that in one word. What problem does this book solve in one word? And really, the best, the best brands in the world, it's about uh, helping even your whole brand should be about that. Uh, and, you know, so Lewis Howes, I know we both know. Um, Lewis was the very first person that Brand Builders Group ever worked with, which, you know, is a great first person to have on your, on your roster. But um, when we exited our former company, so my wife and I you know, had built an eight-figure business from 2006 to 2018, and we had met you along that journey. We exited that business in 2018, and we really didn't have any plan and Lewis randomly called and was like, hey, man, I'm looking for some help. You know, we've been growing, but I need some strategy. Um, and, you know, do you have time? And it was like, oh, we have time available. So Lewis, you know, came over. Uh, he was our first one-on-one -on -one strategy session. And he was the one after that. He was like, this was so transformational. This blew my mind. We, this is your new business. And uh, we didn't plan to start this. Lewis was the one that said, this is your new business. And then he had us on his podcast 
and it was like, you know, we were in business. But for Lewis, he had done all this stuff. And what we helped him realize that his brand is all about solving self-doubt. And we, he got, uh, it, it was, we didn't give him that answer. We just reflected back to him all the things he was doing. And we take people through this exercise called the brand DNA helix. And once he got so clear that self-doubt was just what his brand was about, what his life was about, what his platform was about. I mean, I, I don't think we can take much credit for it. He gives us a lot of credit for this. I mean, Lewis was a rolling stone long, long before us. But from between that day, they had about 30 million total downloads. They now have 200 million total downloads. So they have over almost 10 X in, you know, two years. And, and he's just, I mean, he's on fire and I think that's for a lot of reasons, but hearing someone like him say that was so powerful for me and most people struggle. Like we're entrepreneurs. We can talk for an hour, but we can't explain in one word, what problem do I solve? And so getting clear on that is super important. That's great. Now I, I want to talk personal branding stuff um, and, and alignment, which we're already into it. I mean, it, it's, it's a book is the extension of the personal brand uh, and the personal brand is the extension of the book. I mean, it's kind of like absolutely uh, ch ch chicken or the egg. How do you, are, are you mostly coming in like, or I guess to answer the chicken or the egg question, like which one do you see as first? It's like, Hey, let's get super clear on your personal brand. And I'm like, then let's write a book about that personal brand. Or is it start from the flip side? Like, how do you look at that? For, for us, we see it as get clear on the personal brand first. We think that, um, here, here's what I'll say. I think a book should not be an initial hypothesis. It should be a final conclusion. Meaning, I don't write the book going, here's some ideas that I think are true. It should be, I have tested this, I have vetted this, I've tried it out, and I'm summarizing the synthesis of my findings. And and too many books are an initial hypothesis. They're not a final conclusion. Um, and so, you know, like Take the Stairs is a great example. I was, that came out in 2012. I was 29 years old. I'd been teaching on that for seven years. Um, when my TED Talk came out, How to Multiply Time, you know, it, it, you know, it's like, whoa, 4 million views. Like the video goes viral. I had been teaching that for three years. Like when I stepped on that stage to do my TED Talk, I had no doubt that it wasn't going to crush. I had already tested it so many times. And I think, I actually think it's a mistake to start to, to write the book before you're clear on what your personal brand is about. And so um, one of the reasons we like y'all is because when we first start working with people in, in what we call phase one, topic one, it's, it's called finding your unique brand DNA. And we help people get clear on what problem do they solve in one word? What is their message in one sentence about how to solve that problem? Who do they solve that problem for? And how do they make money solving it? So like you, again, we're aligned here. The book should really be in alignment with the overall business objectives. The book isn't in, in, an, in an end in and of itself as a business model. Not that it can't be, but it's really for the vast majority of people, it is a, it is a step to something, you know, to a bigger business plan. You should know what that business plan is before you write the book because you need to put in the book the calls to actions and the natural tie-ins to all the things. And then, um, so our phase one topic two is what we call captivating content, which is when we would help somebody turn this positioning uh, of the message of one sentence and extrapolating that into a full cohesive outline. And then after that, we kind of move on uh, because we're not in the publishing business. And that's where we would kind of go, okay, now, you know, go see Chandler or go see someone else and be like, turn that outline into a physical product but i think it it helps tremendously to be clear on what is my life about what message do i want to you know spend the left the rest of my life teaching and getting clear on that you should know the sentence before you know before you write the book love it that's great and you and you alluded to this that brand dna and I know that you have, you have kind of a six part process that you walk people through um, and you already kind of, you already kind of touched on some of those. Can you give us kind of the overview of that, the, what you view as kind of the six components in that brand DNA? Yeah. So, um, 
So it's interesting. So here's the best piece of branding, personal branding advice I've ever received. Um, and it's, it's not a Roy Vaden quote. I wish it was. This is not, the, you can't quote me. This is from a guy named Larry Wingett. And Larry said, I heard him say this early in my career. He said, the goal is to find your uniqueness so that you can exploit it in the service of others. Find your uniqueness and exploit it in the service of others. And he said that that was like one of his secrets, but he wasn't in the business of helping people find their uniqueness. So when we started Brand Builders Group, we were like, we got to create a process to help people figure out what that is, which is what the brand DNA Helix is all about. Um, it's a really simple process. It's a little bit hard to take yourself through it because you're so close to, it's like you're so close, you can't see the forest through the trees or whatever that saying is. Um, but, you know, I'll give you the questions. So the first question is, what problem do you solve? And you brainstorm a list of all the answers. And this is what our, our strategists do, right? And in phase one, topic one, we go, okay, take someone through the brand DNA helix and we create a brain dump of all the problems they could solve. But then the second question, which sort of is an overlapping question, is what are you passionate about? And so it's a corroborating question to go, well, I could teach people about spreadsheets because I, I love spreadsheets, but I'm not passionate about teaching them about spreadsheets. And so we kind of inventory, what are you passionate about? And not just the things that are like fuzzy and warm, but also the things that what pisses you off? What breaks your heart? What makes you sad? And there's a list of things that show up there. Then the next two questions um, are, what do I research or what have I researched? Which is sort of like, what do I have classic education on or classic credibility of? And then, and then the fourth question is, what do I have results in? Which is, what have I actually freaking done? And um, it's really hard to, you know, go through all this quickly. But if there is a shortcut, okay, like if we never get a chance to talk to you, if there is a shortcut to figuring out who your book is for and who your, what your, who your personal brand should serve, one of the things that we realized is that you're always most powerfully positioned to serve the person you once were. You're most powerfully positioned to serve the person you once were, which is looking at where did I have to learn knowledge, which was research, and where did I create results? You're a great example of it, right? Like I met you, Chandler, when you were just self-publishing your first book. Like, and then you realize you developed this process, you did it a few times, and now it's like your whole business is you're helping people because you serve that person so deeply. You know their pain, you know their struggle, you know their dream. That's where you're going to get the most traction with the personal brand. Um, and then questions um, uh, five and six uh, are related uh, to your business model. Uh, there's a thing that we call dares, which you know, if you want, we can talk about that. But it's, it's basically how do you make money? It's what business, what would people buy from you? And what business model do you want to have? And we walk people through the, the different business models. And, and anyways, after you inventory all of those, your uniqueness lies at the intersection of those six questions. I see. So you're asking those questions to get, get clear on, okay, uh, you know, walking, walking through the questions that you walked, just walked through, what problem do you solve? Um, what who are you, you solve passionate about? What do you, who do you solve it for? What do you research on? What do you have results in? Uh, and, and so getting clear on that and then you're layering, it's, I mean, it's full circle, kind of coming back to what we were talking about before, you're, you're layering that both with, I would imagine that clarity helps you write a better book um, that, that not only sells better, but that gets better results for people, but also, and I think this is, this is super important <laughs> and often missed is people want to use the book to grow their business. And so I said that there's alignment uh, there uh, to make sure that the book is truly going to feed into uh, the business. And, and business. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, if you go, in a word, what does Brand Builders Group do? Like we're, you know, we do personal brand strategy, which basically is growing the platform, which is the word that you'll hear. It's like growing your reach, which long-term, it's like the reason why Dave Ramsey, his book is, you know, always in the top five in the Wall Street Journal list every week. It's a great book. It changed my life, but it helps that he's got a thousand employees and a, a nine figure business and he reaches 14 million people every week on the radio. Like 
so that's a platform. It's, it's the, the book is one part, the way that we see it, the book is one piece of, of a, the whole big conversation, which is the business, but also, um, you know, digital marketing is a part of that. Your social media, your search engine optimization, uh, paid, you know, advertising is a part of that. Funnels is a part of that. Copywriting is a part of that. Speaking, which was my dream, was I wanted to be the guy standing on stage. So that was, I came up through those ranks. Um, but even speaking, it's a subset of this light, like larger conversation. And so most of our clients, uh, you know, that we work with, we're helping them coordinate all these things together. Um, and that's why I think, you know, when it comes to self-publishing, there's so much depth there. That, you know, that's why we kind of point people to you is go, okay, hey, here's a process that you can follow and just go crank this out. And then, yeah, it, it, it forwards to build the business and then the business promotes the long tail sale of the, of the book. But no, so since you mentioned business model, okay, people always want to know what's the, what's the perfect, like what's the right business model? Like what's the right way to do it? And that, and our answer is there's not a right way to do it. There's only a right way to do it for you. Um, there are lots of ways to make money with a personal brand. Uh, we, we categorize them into five groups. We call them the paids. There's five ways to get paid from a personal brand. Uh, the P stands for product, which is what a self-published book is. If it's printed, it's a physical product. Um, you know, we have clients that sell jewelry. We have clients that make uh, clothing. We have people who sell, you know, mugs and posters. It, those are physical products. Uh, the A in paid stands for ads and affiliates. Um, this is Lewis's primary business model. He's not, his core business isn't making money by selling his audience anything. It's by selling other people access to his audience on the podcast. So if you're good at building an audience, but you don't love building and delivering products or like dealing with customer complaints and stuff, ads and affiliates is a great model. Then I in paid is information. Uh, obviously, there's been a huge explosion of video courses, membership sites. Um, that's information, certifications, assessments. Uh, the D is deals. So deals are third-party deals, book deal. So that's where we talk commercial published. Uh, brand deals, TV deals, licensing deals, movie deals. Um, those are third-party arrangements uh, where you're, you're paid to create a piece of art. Uh, and then S is services. Services are the fastest path to cash. So it's like, if I'm a financial advisor, that's a service. If, if, if I'm a, you know, I sell home, organiz home organizing, I come into your house and organize, I'm using my personal brand to sell that service. It's the fastest path to cash short term, but it's the least scalable long term. So those are basically the five ways to make money and then what we do is, is we simultaneously help clients or we encourage clients to look for something that we call dares. Um, so dares is a criteria of sort of like, what's the best business model? For us, the perfect model would be, it would have all the dares, which means it's digital, automated, recurring, evergreen, and scalable. Digital, automated, recurring, evergreen, and scalable. Um, you know, but no business model is all of those things. So you're constantly having to make a trade-off. Like, you know, do I have a big team? Do I know how to print? Do I have a warehouse? Am I good at technology? Do, do I, am I good at acquiring customers? Am I not so good at acquiring them, but I'm better at upgrading them? And those are all factors that fit into your uniqueness. Your uniqueness is not just your message. Your uniqueness is also what, what are you best suited to do to make money? But the book is a huge part of the whole thing and hopefully you're strategic about how i want to use this book yeah that's great that's great and loved loved the breaking down of the, of the business models and that's awesome final final question or so um and i think i want to circle back to the why uh it, it, from a personal branding perspective and so the in your mind like why did, why does this matter why does personal branding matter and and for the person who's who's listening to this is like, all right, there's probably two, two groups here, right? There's, I, all right, I want to use a personal brand to sell more books or I want to use a personal brand along with my book to grow my business. Like, how do you, why does it matter? And how do you see building a personal brand driving results in both of those kind of pockets or areas? Yeah, so 
let's let's talk about that. That's a great question. And and here's what I would say too, by the way, if if you're if you're interested in trying to like find your uniqueness and like talking through this, uh, if you go to freebrandcall.com slash SPS, so for self-publishing school, freebrandcall.com slash SPS, uh, you can request a free call with one of our strategists and they'll kind of like, you know, walk you through the helix and, and they'll explain like, how we see the full world of building a platform and a, and a, and a whole business. Cause that's a, you know, that's always the question is like, you know, am I focused on just the book? Am, am I focused on the business? But I actually think, you know, the question you asked about why does it matter? I think it, it matters less because of a book. No, it's neither a book or a business. What really matters is the reader and the audience right? The reason why this conversation matters is, is not, you know, because we want to help people make more money. We do want to help people make more money, but our real goal, which I know is similar to yours, is we serve what we call mission-driven messengers. We serve the people who want to make impact, and they care more about the impact. They want to make money too, but, but they care more about the impact. And we believe that if there's a calling on your heart, that you feel like, oh, I want to write a book or I, I, you know, I, I want to build a platform. I want to reach more people. I want to have a podcast. I want to speak. I want to do more coaching, consulting, whatever it is. We believe that the calling that you feel on your heart is actually the result of a signal that's being sent out by someone else. And that signal is being sent by somebody who needs you. They need you because they right now are going through the pain that you went through. They are struggling with challenges that you've already overcome. They're asking questions right now that you already know the answers to. They're trying to, to solve problems that you already figured out the solution. And that person that's out there, that person needs you way more than you need them. Like, you know what it's like to be there, and so we're trying to like help those two people find each other. Like the, 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 the personal brand with the calling that they're being pulled to do something. And, and then that person that is sending out that signal. And we're just trying to help those, them find each other. You know, a book is a, a, a really important way to do that. It's a huge part of the process. But I think the reason why it matters is more be, be, because of impact than income. Awesome. And you kind of touched on this, on this a little bit. Um, where, can, where can people go to find, find out more about you, more about Brand, uh, Brand Builders Group and kind of what you guys are up to? Yeah, I, I would just say go to, go to freebrandcall.com slash SPS. You know, uh, if, you, if you want to learn more, I would just start there. Um, you know, we'll kind of filter you through some questions to figure out uh, where you're at and then our team will talk to you. Uh, we'll, if, if, if for some reason it's not the right time or we're not the right fit, we'll guide you towards other resources that, that, that are a, a great step for you. Um, but I would just say go to freebrandcall.com slash SPS uh, and you can, you can see all the clients we work with and kind of more of what we do. Um, but just, you know, just, just remember there is, there is somebody out there right now that is, that is waiting for you. They are, they are begging for you. They literally could possibly be on their hands and knees praying right now for help with problems that you know like the back of your hand. And um, if you stay focused on that person, you will never feel fear when the mission to serve is clear. Love that. Awesome, Rory. Hey, thank you so much for coming on uh, and, and just really appreciate this, man. Great chat with you. Always, brother. All the best. See ya.